pleasure. Good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Burick, and this is going to be the San Jose Sharks rounding out the season report, where we also talk about general manager and Hall of Famer Doug Wilson unfortunately having to step down due to health concerns. We wish him all the best. He said he is getting better, though, and looks forward to his future in hockey, so obviously that spells a lot of promise for his health concerns moving in a positive direction, but he said he feels it's the best to just move on from San Jose for the betterment of himself and them to continue to focus on his health issues, which is perfectly understandable, and uh, he was the longest-serving general manager behind David Poley, so uh, he was second in that category, and that's a huge feat there since 2003, has led many great teams. Have they won a cup? No, but that's not the be-all and all of everything. That's what you want to achieve, but many things have to go right for that, right? And I thought Doug Wilson's formed many good teams during his run there, where just stuff happens and they weren't able to fully get over the hump. We don't have to revisit all those situations in a video like this, as this is just a quick video on Doug Wilson <clears throat> officially stepping down, where they're going to do an extensive search um, for the position as well, um, where Joe Will, who served as the interim, who was Wilson's assistant general manager, he will stay, Joe Will will, uh, stay in the job for now. But let's look at the Sharks as a whole as we give their round out the season reports. That's what I'm doing on teams right now. As we look at our San Jose Sharks and uh, see how good uh, the team did this year. So let's dive into it as the San Jose Sharks this season. Obviously, uh, record-wise, that's completely different. They're 29-31-9. But I'm just talking about how guys did that we want to see do to progress into next year. So this team can be the San Jose Sharks that they had some years with the with uh, the Marlers of the world or when Doug Wilson was there where they can be the great team they once were. Now, Noah Gregor, uh, he's had a tail season where he's had some moments and then dipped and then moments and then dipped. So if he can find more consistency, you're set. Logan Couture's been good this year. Hurdle. Barbanoff and Meyer, perfect line. Matt Nieto is going to be replaced by somebody younger next year. Same might go for uh, <clears throat> Nick Bonino, um, but uh, we'll have to see. And then Rudolph Balchers, he he was kind of similar to Gregor. He's had really good moments and then needs a little bit more consistency, but I think both of those players have some lightning in their stick. It's just about getting fully consistent at this point. Jeffrey Veal, Scott Reedy, Jonathan Darlene, uh, Darlene's been the best of those guys. His problem is being more consistent on both sides, but he's still only 24. The thing I really like about the Sharks is they don't have a lot of the sexiest big names, but they have a lot of the good C+, plus, B-, minus, B level youngsters that really help fill out a roster that if I'm a guy in the free agency, especially because obviously San Jose is a very nice place to live, uh, but from I haven't been there, but from what you see and what you hear and what you read about, um, uh, it's obviously, I think, a destination still for some, but it's just about the money. Their big issue is money because they pay Brett Burns so much money at eight. Uh, the biggest issue is uh, Edward Vlasic, who's just not good anymore. A uh, great legend, just not good anymore. At 35, they're still paying him $7 million. Uh Nicholas Meloche has stepped in and been solid this year. I think his numbers are skewed by the fact that Edward Vlasic just can't really move around anymore, and you have two guys that aren't the quickest on the same line. Ferraro and Carlson. Carlson's been better this year. Ferraro's one of my favorite defensemen in the entire West. I think he's a guy that is a lot better than what his stat sheet shows, and that's just because of how the Sharks' defense and how their team kind of as a whole has played defensively this year. But what I like about this Sharks team is they added Kapo Kakinen. I thought that was a good addition. He's a guy that you could build around for now and net, along with James Reimer, who I believe they should keep with him, veteran with a youngster. And then they also have Solshenko, who's going to continue to develop. They brought in Staylock. They have Edmund as well, who they picked in 2018. So they have options in neck. Magnus Krona as well, who they were able to get. Mike Robinson um, as well. So uh, they have options in that Benjamin Goudreau, who they picked in last year's draft, but he's obviously ways away. So they have options in net in terms of quicker future, like Edmund, Solchenko, those guys. But I do really like, this is how I'm finishing, throw Bordalo. I got to watch him play live. Uh, Tomas Bordalo 
is an absolute joy to watch live. I got to watch him play uh, for University of Michigan in the regionals for a couple games. Uh, watching him on TV is one thing. Watching him live is another. He's such a great instinctual player. I think he's going to be great for the team. And uh, he's obviously close as well because I don't think he's going to need that much AHL time whenever he does decide to come out. And then um, Oberg is kind of somebody to look at that's an overseas guy or already 21. Obviously... <clears throat> has gotten time to grow up in Sweden where the fundamentals are key and honed into those guys and had a very good season as a former seventh-round pick in the SHL. That seems to have third-line or fourth-line or written all over him, Linus Oberg. So I think that's just – there's more guys to mention, obviously, so you don't have to at me or put them in the, – if you want to put them in the comments, like Gilmore is McHugh's, but I'm just naming people to just show this team has from the C to kind of B-plus level prospects. And then I would say Bordalo is even an A potentially in my mind. Um, and then William Eklund is definitely an A. Ozzy Wellspot is definitely an A. And Tristan Robbins is potentially an A. Same with uh, Gushin and Co. So I think they're a good building team. It's just wait a couple years, and I think the Sharks team is going to be mighty sexy to watch on the ice and a really fun team to really dive into because they already have fun players that are just like your B guys that really fill out a roster, fill out a role well. But then once they add in the guys like the Bordelos, the Eklunds, the Wellspot, the Robbins, et cetera, et cetera, that's when it's going to be massively fun for the Sharks. But solid season for them to build on. I would give them, realistically, this year, since I didn't have the highest expectations for the Sharks, I would give them like a C plus because they did start showing signs to build. They added a couple of and obviously they have good prospects. So I think they're building in the right direction and they show promises of being close to hockey 500 that I think they're definitely closer than maybe we thought where maybe the, the Sharks and people's eyes coming into this season were more of the three, four year project. Maybe now they're more of the two, three year project for people. So they're moving in the right direction, so to speak. He said, everybody stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to 2.30 or more by the end of April to meet our goal. Peace out and stay safe, everybody.